Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Praise God. Thank you for being here. It is good to have the opportunity of God to provide the strength and the means for us to come together. What a privilege to be in the house of God. And I feel His presence, uh, my humor, has got me in a lot of trouble in some pool here. <laughs> and uh, I'm just not going to change. God made me this way by a few you didn't mean to. But uh, there's another, you know, the Bible says, and it's plain to me, the laughter doeth good like a medicine. I'm not talking about some filth or something carnal. But I do. Sometimes I go too far with it. I, I got a receipt call, got rebuked by a pastor. <laughs> he failed in his church and called me a couple weeks. I said, I didn't appreciate that. And I told them the way they look, they needed to laugh. <laughs> they were sad looking people. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate this man allowing me to come and to share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I pick with Bobby. I, I think Bobby just now beginning to get used to the fact that he don't need to take everything I say too seriously. If you take everything I say too seriously, you're definitely not going to like it. You're going to struggle to like me as I am, but you definitely won't like it. But it's a privilege and an honor to be a spokesman this morning for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the word. You need the word of God. Right. You need it. Yes. We need it. Yes. Amen. I feel his presence, and I can promise you there's no one. I believe this with all my heart. They may equal me, but there's no one that enjoys worship in spirit and truth more than I do. Okay. I feel his spirit. I feel his presence right now. And I welcome it. I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of what it can do. I'm not afraid how it might manifest itself. I'm not afraid that you might dance, you might shout. And God forbid, you might even run. It yeah. wouldn't bother me. Yeah. It would other people. It would other Pentecostals. It wouldn't bother them. But I, 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 if it's God, I love it. Be honest. Yes, amen. If it's God, I'm, I'm for it. Yes. If it's you, just don't trip and fall. That's all I can say. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you're able, stand with me. I, I don't usually read a lot of scripture, but today I feel led to it. I, 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 I have trouble now even keeping my place in scripture, so uh, just follow with me, and I have trouble pronouncing names, but I was going to read a little verse or two, but I'm going to read a, a, a quite a few verses I feel led to from some familiar scripture, very familiar scripture, but God led me here. This is not something I just decided, well, this is what I'm going to preach with. This is what God woke me up this morning and told me to preach. He knew you'd be here. He knew what you need to hear. And I feel his presence. You've heard these scripture, and they're applicable. If, if they're not applicable more than ever, they're applicable to us today. In the fourth chapter, a second Timothy, as Paul gives his charge to Timothy to preach the word. I want to read quite a few verses. I was only going to touch on a few verses, but since my memory is not what it used to be, I, I better read them. Yeah. Hallelujah. Second uh, Timothy, the fourth chapter, I charge thee, therefore, before God and Lord Jesus Christ, and shall judge the quick and the dead of his appearing in his kingdom. Praise the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having each and ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of the evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them who also love his appearing. Listen to these words here. They often we emphasize these great scriptures I've read, but a lot, a lot of times we overlook exactly. What, uh, what we can glean from the next few words. Paul, as he faces his end, his demise, his martyr, he's going to be martyred and he knows it. But listen to what he says. 
do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, for Demas hath forsaken me, having loved the present world, and supported unto Thessalonica, Croatia unto Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with me, for he is profitable to me for my ministry. And Tithesus have I sent to Ephesus. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee the books. But listen, bring with thee the books, but especially the parchments. God, anoint your word. Oh, else anointed, anoint me. God, give us an ear to hear. God, let your will be done. Yes. God, let your word be planted. Mm -hmm. Let it do that which you have sent it to do. Hallelujah. We give you praise and honor, and we, we thank you for the opportunity to send and to deliver the gospel. We ask your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. I look at these words and I, I think about Paul as he is in prison in, in what I would call a dungeon or cave, awaiting his execution. And the, these words are special to me. I, and I, I look at it and I think about his end and I think, and, and there are those that don't agree with me. I've been rebuked. Here lately, I've been rebuked more than I've been exhorted. Yeah. I thought the Bible said exhort one another. <laughs> I, I need to preach that to them. But, but I, I truly believe it. I don't see how I can be wrong that we're living in the end of our dispensation. This thing's about over. People talk about the election, and I, I, I look at them and I say, well, this is my personal opinion. I'm not a politician. Matter of fact, I'm not registered as either. I'm independent. I don't have a political platform. But I, I, I tell them, I don't know that it's going to make a lot of difference who comes into office. I, 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 I think that if one, I won't name the one, but if one comes into office, that, uh, it, if it, it God will allow it, but it, he'll have to shorten the days. The Bible said that uh, in the end, if it's possible that the elect be deceived, but I won't name it, but if one comes into office, I truly believe that we better know that the end is near. And I thought about the end and what we need to be doing. We as Christian people, probably the last voice before the coming of the Lord is in this place and in the churches today, the last voice that they are here and what we need to be doing and how we need to approach and how we need to study and what we need to to adorn ourselves with as we come into the our life. I, I thought about uh, how I, I go back to the beginning. I, I want to go back to the beginning of this man's life. I want you to come with me and let's, let's go back down to Taurus and uh, let's find a young boy named Saul. He's born in uh, a devout Jewish family. He's brought up uh, by a friend, no doubt, in a parish taught by a rabbi. And when he reaches 13 years of age, his parents had to be devout Jews. They had to be. Because they chose to send this boy away at 13 years of age into one of the most noted seminaries or Jewish whatever schools that was known to man under Galileo. Galileo, I can't say his name. I can't even say my name half the time. But he was noted as one of the greatest teachers of the Jewish religion. And they sent Saul to Tarsus away from from Taurus and, and they sent him to Jerusalem to study. Eight years this program. Eight years. And he, he was the brightest. He was the most outstanding. He was the greatest scholar. Uh, he, he, he excelled. If you read the Jewish history, uh, you'll find that they said that the boy, they could not keep enough books for him to read, that he was hungry for that devout Jewish faith. And he hated Christian people. He despised. I, I, I often look and, and I, I think about the divisive nation in which we live. And, and, and I, I, even as if I wasn't a Christian, I don't think that I can understand why anyone would hate anyone over the color of their skin or their religion. I, I can't understand it. I don't know. I don't care how wrong they are. I don't care how far off base they are. How can anyone just out of that opinion despise me? Why do people hate the Jews so much? And despise him, and why have they been so persecuted? Uh, but uh, Saul was one of those, and 
He grew in authority. And he grew in he grew in, 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 in all manner of acceptance. He was so well liked and so well known and so well uh, renowned that he was able, my friend, at twenty some years of age, to approach the Pontius Pilate to, to come before Simon's high priest and beg of him letters that he could go bring back men and women of the Christian faith back. He despised it didn't matter, man or woman. But then we are all familiar with that familiar story how he was on the road to Damascus when that great light of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the light of the countenance of God shined down upon him. Do you remember the day when that light shined in your life? Can, can you praise him for the day that he come and revealed himself unto you? Saul, Saul, why purpose? Persecutest thou me? What, why, why, what, what have I done? All I've ever done. If, if we think about a church, all he's ever done has been good. He's healed the sick and he's opened blinded eyes and he's raised the dead and he's fed the multitudes and he's put his arm around the grave sides. Can you say, I mean, all he's ever done to us is good. Can somebody say, praise God, he's been good to me? Amen. 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 And, and I look at this and I think about this and God began to, 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 to open my eyes to what he wanted me to say. And I thought about God. Well, why? Why, God? Why this kind of end? I, I remember he wrote in one of his letters to the church that he, he was in a straight in between two. He was torn between going to heaven and staying here and finishing the call of God in his life. He said, I'm in a straight. said, I, I, I really prefer. And, and I've often wondered... But with all that he endured, with all the shipwreck and all the beatings and all the imprisonments and the endured of him, was he, was he just trying to escape? And I really believe that he wanted to go see him that he loved. I believe that he loved God so much that he'd rather be there than here. But he knew that God had a call upon his life to, to establish churches in Asia. And he said, but it's better that I stay here. But why? Why did God finally decide to, to, to grant his request? Why did God choose this method? Why did God not just let him die in sleep or have a peaceful death? What about the others? Uh, Eleven of the twelve disciples were martyred. They were martyred because they loved the Lord and the Word of God. Can you say amen? Yes. They loved it so much they died for it. Amen. Do you love the Word of God? Yes. I thought and wondered why God, why? I, I, I thought about, you know, if, if Jesus doesn't, you know, I, I, I some of us, are, we're so close to the end, it really doesn't much matter. We're, we're about to go home. We may go by the way of grave, but my days, uh, the sand in this hourglass is a whole lot more in my hourglass. It's on the bottom. There is on the top. And like a vapor, it vanishes away. And, and, and I wonder, God, as, as we enter this last day, what will be my end? What, 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 what will be my mode of transportation? Will God take me with cancer? My daddy died of cancer. I often wondered why God would take a man that traveled two million miles, one thousand of souls of Jesus Christ, while I would watch a clown on a bed. And, and, but, but God will choose that method. God will choose that we may suffer with him physically and spiritually, but we shall also reign with him. Amen. Can you say amen? Does somebody feel a praise of the Lord in their mouth this yes. morning? Yes. Is he worthy of it? Yes, amen. Oh, my goodness. And God's about to let him, allow him to be martyred, and he knows the end's approaching. But the words that he writes, that he charges Timothy to preach the word, and talks about those that will really those will have each and ears and they'll turn their, you know, they'll turn away from the truth. Bible. Yeah, I, that's one thing I, I, I think that y'all really, really are blessed by. You've got a preacher of the Word of God in your church. Yes. You've got a pastor that preaches the Word. There's a lot of people preach from the Word. There's a lot of people that preach about the Word. But there's very few people that preach the Word. And I believe y'all got one of the best. I really do. You need it in this last day. We need the Word of God more than we've ever needed it. We need to hear it. We need to hide it. We need for it to build our faith. And he, and he said there'd come, come a time when they have, have engineers and they turn their ears from the truth. 
I've often heard in the last day there'll be a famine for the word. The famine's not going to be for the preaching of the word. The famine's going to be for the hearing of the word of God. The world does not want to hear the truth. They're trying to turn away from the truth. They don't want you to tell them the truth. They don't want it on the courthouse wall. They don't want it in their school. They won't, don't want it in, in their community. They don't want it anywhere. They are turning their ears away from the truth. But if they've ever needed to hear it, they need to hear it now. Jesus Christ died for their sins. He's coming again. And the time is at hand. Can somebody say amen? Praise God forever. Yes. But I see him as he begins to recollect a little bit. He said, only Luke is with me. I'm here now and only Luke was with me. He said, the son of departed. And one, because he loved the world. And that time I was all alone, but now Luke is with me. He said, but when you come, he said, I want you to bring Mark with you. I want you to bring Mark with you. I thought about that. I, I thought about uh, there was a time when you thought maybe he wouldn't say that. There was a time when there was some God uses, sometimes God uses conflict. We don't realize that. We blame the devil for it. And there's a lot of it we don't have to blame the devil. He's, a, he's in charge of a lot of conflict and confusion. But a lot of times God will divide us and send one one place and one another. But uh, I thought of if there's one thing that I need to learn about the end time, is there ever a time for me to realize who's been profitable to me? Who's been profitable to you? Who do you look back on? Who, who in your lifetime, as you've traveled this Christian journey, has been an instrument and, a, and, 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 and an example to you that you're thankful for? Praise God. Can you, can you just say praise the Lord for those, yeah. that, those that have been a witness? Can you just say thank yeah. God for living epistles read of moment? Can't you just lift your hands and say, I praise you, Lord, that along my life's journey, though, though I may not have agreed, but maybe God, we had a difference of opinion. Maybe we had a parting of the ways, but he went on to promote your kingdom, and I kept on promoting your kingdom. We had the same agenda. We're headed to the same place. We'll meet again for eternity. Let us love Love one another and pray for one another and worship one with another and exalt Amen. the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I feel his presence to you. Yeah. I want to get down from here, but I don't want to I want to get down from here so I can't stand it. Yeah. I feel like a cage down on my life, one of these moving that moving targets. <laughs> But I, I, I thought about it, and I thought about it. I thought about it. Only Luke is with me. Hey, I was with a preacher friend of mine this week, sat down to have some fellowship and a meal, and we began to fellowship one with another. And I began to tell him stories about prayer and how I'd seen prayer answered in people's lives. Uh, my, my wife's mother was one of those examples. Uh, she kept our boys while we worked and I worked and evangelized and I would travel home from work a lot of times and maybe get home, leave a little early, work through lunch, get home at 4, 4.30 and have to be in service 100 miles away for 7. Then you leave me a lot of time. And I stopped to pick up my boys and her mother come to the door with them. She didn't know I was going to revive them. She said, Grayson, need you do me a favor? I said, what's that? She said, I'd like for you to come and rake all these leaves out of my yard. And I said, Stella, I said, I can't. I said, I don't have time. I wish I could. I, I regret it because I knew she was old and tired. Next day I go to pick up those kids. That yard's clean. Not a leaf in the yard. And I looked at Stella and I said, Stella, did, did you find it? Right in the yard. She said, she said, you know, I said, when you left. So I looked at the side door. I lifted up my hands. I'm tired, Lord, help me. So about that time, a little whirlwind started. At the end of the road. 
three or four leaves began to swirl. He said, I stood there and watched it until they come and it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then when it came into my yard, it picked up every leaf. <laughs> Just a simple prayer. But you know, we need fellowship. We need to sit down with one another and share with one another the blessings of God and the miracles of God. When, 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 we're, when, when we're facing trial, it may be someone that would bring something to our remembrance that would encourage us, that would strengthen us. Yeah. My friend, in this last day, we need Christian <laughs> fellowship. We need to share one with another. Amen. The great blessings of God. Has he blessed you? Has he worked miracles in your life? Can you testify to a time and to a place where it had to be God? It couldn't have been anybody else. No man could have done it. No man could explain. If you have, won't you lift both hands and I will say, Lord, I've had a time like that. I've been to a place like that. I've shared an experience like that. And I want to share it with my brothers and sister that they know God. You're on the throne and hear the voice of your children even in the dungeon in the time of despair. You've not got a heart that's dull, a heart that's heavy, or a heart that's stone, but you've got a heart of love for us. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We need that fellowship. Yes. yes. Oh, I feel his presence. Thank you, I don't know if it's Facebook appropriate. I'm not Facebook appropriate, probably. I picked my Bobby. Uh, he's just now picking up on my humor. I'm glad he's picking up on it. But I picked with him and I said that. And I, and I, was, I wasn't really picking. I wanted it to sound like I was picking. You ever pick with somebody and, and you really tell the truth, but you don't want them to know you're telling them the truth? Yeah. I'm weird like that. I told you. That's just who I am. You got to put up with me. <laughs> Linda's been doing it 50 some years. Surely y'all do it for an hour. Amen. <laughs> but I tell him, Bobby, I, you know, he told me he was going to be back, and I thought to myself, you know, the Bible talks about uh, if someone comes into the place and he's got a higher position and uh, a higher calling, you know, you need to step down. And I thought, well, Bobby, I, if you're going to be there, I'm going to feel like I'm. He used to teach, and he talks about trial sermons. I said, I feel like I'm preaching a trial sermon. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I really did. I told him that, and I thought I was kidding, but now I'm here. I don't know if I was kidding or not. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm Facebook appropriate, but but I want you to notice this. Not only did he send for Mark. And not only did he charge Timothy, I preached a message one time not too far down the road uh, down here at Longtown Pentecost on the church. It's been a few years back and I preached and I, I, made, a, I, made, a, I made a statement and it just came to my mind. I, I was preaching on Elijah and Elisha and I said this to the congregation. If Jesus tarries and time ushers in our departure, and our spirit returns back to the Father. Who's going to pick up your mantle? Who are you going to charge? Who are you going to witness to? Who are you going to leave an example to? Like Timothy, Timothy, it's about over for me. I've, I've fought a good fight. I've run my race. I finished it. I didn't stop short. I didn't take a detour. I run, I, every step I took was ordered by the Lord and I, I finished, I got to the finish line and that's what we're all endeavoring to do, aren't we? There's a crown of righteousness towards church. Let you and say, thank you, Lord. There's a crown of righteousness awaiting me. All those that love his appearing. I, I've done it all, Timothy, now. I leave this in your charge. I've established churches in Asia and I've set the boundaries for you and I've gave you an example. Now, young man, take up this charge and go forward in his name. And I showed you who's the anointer. I showed you who's got the power. I showed you who the Holy Ghost baptized me. Now go in his might and his power and carry this wonderful gospel and the gospel itself will do the work. Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. 
And when you come, tell them to bring my cloak. It must have been a little bit damp and dingy. You ever thought about Luke and Luke and Paul when they was in that, when Luke visited Paul in the dungeon? He's a physician. Reckon he might have ministered to him physically. But I wonder, and in part me, my imagination, I wish I could have been Walt Disney, maybe my imagination I could have come up with something, but in my imagination, I can almost see the two as they converse one with another, and I can almost hear Peter tell Paul about the day of Pentecost. I can almost hear him talk about that upper room in St. Paul. I was up there with 119 young people or more, and there come a sound from heaven, Paul, like I'm rushing, mighty one. Oh, we don't preach it anymore. Pentecostals think they don't need it anymore. They don't realize how desperately we need it again. They don't realize how desperately you need it in this last day. Oh, I, I, you know, everybody thinks I'm talking about running and jumping and dancing. And I told you that don't bother me. But it's the empowering. It's, yes. it's the empowering presence. The stability that it brings. If any man lack wisdom, you see, the reason you need another reason you need wisdom because God gave you knowledge, but unless you have the wisdom to convey it, you, you, you're useless. Uto bo shadai, God gives you wisdom. Yes. Holy Ghost gives you wisdom to apply that knowledge with power to reach the hearts of broken men and women who are slave to the powers of Satan. Don't you want to see somebody set free? Don't you want to see the chains fall off? Don't you want to see the prison's door open? Don't you want to see the grave closed unwrapped? Don't you want to see God manifest in the Don't you want to see the works of Jesus Christ manifest in the Spirit? Get the baptism of the Holy Ghost and let Him manifest Himself. And I can, I can almost hear, hear Him telling Paul about that great day. I can almost hear Paul tell him about the shipwreck <laughs> and how he told all the men we, where I, I told them, nowhere we all gonna be we all gonna make it. Landed on that island and that fire and that snake comes up out of the fire. I can almost hear Paul talk to Peter to me. I just shook him off. <laughs> I just shook him off. And Peter said, "Well, I was in prison." And I was chained, had four quadrants of soldiers. <laughs> said, they're like no way out. Said, they just beheaded my brother. They just beheaded this, my brother apostle. And, and they were going to take my head off the next day when I was asleep. And it really bothered them, didn't it? Just, can you imagine going to sleep knowing that tomorrow somebody's going to cut your head off? Can you imagine the faith and the love that that man in and he told Paul? Said, yes, and I, I was there. All of a sudden, the name will appear. Hallelujah. So it woke me up. Hallelujah. I, I do my best sleeping on the couch. I don't sleep too well in my bed, but you get me on the couch about news time. And my night before last, I was gone. I'd worked hard that day. And about 12 30, something nudging me. Rain, what are you still doing up? I said, I got up and saw the light. I believe, it, I believe it's an angel had to nudge you pretty hard. I believe you're sleeping pretty good. Get up, man. Get on up. When you hear the chains fall off, gates open. I believe there's those kind of testimonies going on. But Paul said, make sure you bring the parchments and especially the books. But what Paul was saying is, I, I want to read some more scripture. I'm going to die. And my time's short, but I want to read the words some more. I, 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 I want to get into that Pentateuch. I, I want to get into those five books. I want to get into that, which used to, I used to be a Jew, and I didn't know you was the Messiah, but I want, I want to read more about the Messiah. Amen. Jesus is coming. He is the Messiah. Can you say amen? amen? If you want to get ready for what's coming, you need to get in the Word. Amen. You need to find you a good friend to fellowship with that's got a real experience with God. Not some hypocrite, a half-hearted guy that goes to church every once in a while and he ain't got something better to do. If God 
doesn't come first in your heart on Sunday morning, God ain't first in your heart at all. Amen. You hear me? When you'd rather go somewhere and do something else and I'll make time for them next week. The, the preeminence of Christ, I'll be first or I won't be. If you don't love God, now this is a special place. We're in a special place. Yeah. How many of you know you're sitting in a special place yeah. that's been set aside? You got to worship Him. Worship Him with me. Say, God, I, I love you. I come because I love you. I, I come because you are King, Lord, Savior. You are the Prince of Peace. You are God. He run a good race. He fought a good fight. He used analogies like that. But I thought about this analogy. The soldier of the cross. Well, you're a soldier of the cross, and I thought about I was in the field a lot, but 
I got called out of the field, and I was glad to come out of the field, to be honest with you. I got called down to a base camp, and when I come down to the base camp, I was assigned a, a, a location. If, if we come under attack, this is where you're supposed to be. This is where you go. This is where you're assigned if you're under attack. Well, on Thanksgiving Day, I was assigned to, I was in, in, in route to a place, a big base camp. We come under attack. The problem was I didn't be long enough for them to tell me where I was supposed to be. But I want, I want you to know that, brother, you better find your assignment. Yes. <laughs> you better find where God wants you. This thing is good. He needs you in this battle. He needs you to arm yourself. Hey, I know the battle's not flesh and blood. I know that we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. And I know that we don't we wrestle against flesh and fire. But God needs you to be where he wants you to be. And he wants you there because, my friend, that's where he has placed you in his wisdom. That's where he's placed you in his knowledge and his foreknowledge of the end time. Are you ready to, to arm yourself? Are you ready to do battle? Are you ready to stand? Are you ready to fight? Are you ready to finish? Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Yeah. Bobby, I know you want to come back up here, so I'm going to let you. Come on. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for allowing me to minister to you. I hope I didn't offend you. If I offend you because of who I am, I apologize. I offend you because of the word at home. I thought a good fight. If I could just tell him that, if I could just sing before the Lord and say, God, I am alone. He got a little rocky a couple of times. He got a little, I got a little, the feet nagged in the fire a few times. But I held on. I held on. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Stand with me for a moment. If you're able, if you're not, I understand. Physically, if you're not able. Bobby, thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. Thank, thank you Pastor. so much for this opportunity. For this girl. I, I tell you what, I sing you highly, and I appreciate, appreciate you muchly. <laughs> thank you. There's healing in the Word of God. Amen. You need to be healed. You know, I, 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 I'm afraid to go here, but I got to. Uh, I got the professor here. But, but you, know, you, know, you ever thought about that? Some people say they've got the gift of it, and then some will tell me they got uh, I just don't believe God gives one person. I believe he gives it to the church and the body and the Holy Ghost filled people. The gift of healing is present in this place. Yeah. And it, can, and it can manifest itself through anybody that's full of the Holy Ghost and it can just go through His Word. Send the Word. If you're sick, I want you to lift your hand right now and say, Lord, send the Word. Send the Holy Ghost, the power of your Word, and heal me. Heal me, God. Manifest your glory and strength and power through your Spirit and your Word and show thyself strong in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I'll finally hush, Bobby. Thank you from the depths of my heart. She cut this thing down, I might get happy. Glory to God. Amen. I'll trade with you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Somebody yeah. pray. Yeah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord as we continue to give the thanks.